Income tax 2023-2024. Earned income tax credit, the EIC, with three or more qualifying children. Tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because we need extreme concentration for income tax preparation. 2023-2024. Here, first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in our Form 1040 example problem using Lacerte Tax Software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point, Adam Taxman, just trying to Boy, that dang tax man living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We're starting out as a single filer. No dependents. W-2 income of 100000 to start out with. We have the standard deduction, 13850 giving us the taxable income, 86150 That's the bottom line of the income statement portion of our income tax formula, which we can see in Excel mirrored 100000 Standard deduction, 13850 getting us to the 86150 The software calculating the tax then. At the 14266 on page number two of the software, there's the 14266. We're looking at the credits, more specifically the earned income uh, tax credit, which is the primary credit that's been using the tax return, the tax code, the tax system, not as a way to collect taxes in this case, but as a type of welfare benefit or safety net type of program the general idea with the credits of course being that if you had a dollar credit versus a dollar deduction they're both good for taxes typically but the credit is usually better because if you had a dollar deduction it would simply be reducing the bottom line of the income statement part of the income tax formula taxable income and you get the benefit based on page two your tax rate as opposed to if you had the dollar credit then if you had the tax liability to cover the credit, you would typically get the full benefit of the dollar in credit, whether that credit be up here in the tax and credits section or down here in the payments section. However, if you don't have the tax liability to cover the credit, then if the credit is up here, you're going to lose it because if it was to give you a benefit, it would result in you not paying taxes but receiving money from the government, which by definition isn't a tax, but rather a welfare or benefit or safety net type of program. If, however, the credit is down here, then you might still get a benefit, a quote refund, even though it's not a refund in that case, uh, if, if the credit takes the tax below zero. And that's going to be the uh, refundable types of credits. And that's why the earned income credit is down here so the two major credits that are kind of linked together because they're both tied intimately to dependents typically child dependents being the child tax credit and the additional child tax credit as well as the earned income credit okay so now we're we've ran scenarios in the past and it's somewhat complex to look at this earned income tax credit because the credit goes up as your income goes up and then it goes back down and that that curve you can think of will be different depending on the number of children you have so we looked at zero children then we and that was a maximum credit of six hundred dollars we looked at one child which has a maximum credit of the three thousand nine hundred ninety five whether single or married or head of household we took looked at two children six thousand six oh four whether single married head of household and now we're looking at three or more children that maxes out 
the possibility of the credit based on the number of children. If you have four children, in other words, it's not going to increase the amount of your potential credit here anymore, although still could have an impact possibly on other areas of the tax code, such as possibly the child tax credit. Here's going to be the maximum income level if not married. Here's the income level if married. These are a bit deceiving, however, because this is the level at which you would lose the credits entirely. And what we want to see is where that credit is going to be basically maximized as well. We'd also like to take a look at what would happen if we had two people that were maxed out on the credit and then they got married. Would that be good or bad? Probably not. To, and what if there was like three people, one person had a 7,430 credit and the other had two kids and got the credit of 6,604 or three kids and one kid right and they got married what would be the the tax implications just to kind of get an idea of what the the situation would be for planning purposes there as well as is that the way is that uh good for from a policy perspective okay so if i go back on over we're gonna say let's let's say now that we're gonna add three kids let's add one kid at a time so the first kid uh, if I go back on over, we'll change the filing status. So we'll say single to head of household for the first kid. And then we're going to say, give me a dependent. We're going to add a dependent. And so now if I go back on over, we have Adam, head of household. That changed the filing status. Now remember, the second kid's not going to really change the filing status, but might give us other benefits, right? So here's Sam Taxman. Uh, qualifies for the child tax credit we're going to say here 100,000 now we have an increase from the single filing uh standard deduction to the head of household 20,800 giving us the taxable income 79,200 then page 2 calculating the tax we get a more favorable tax rates here because we're now at head of household status and we get the above above I call it above above the line deduction or non-refundable credit of the 2000 because we have enough tax in order to take it and of course we don't have anything on the refundable sections because we we have an income level that's too high to take the refundable stuff and we were able to take the full 2000 up top because the taxable uh the the tax liability was there to do so okay so now let's go back and say what if we brought the income level down to let's say uh to do let's say it was like ten thousand ten thousand with one dependent so now page one we have adam head of household sons there ten thousand gets wiped out by the standard deduction in that case the standard deduction is not doing much because it would have got wiped out in a sing in a single as well as the head of household page two the tax rates aren't doing much because we don't have any income to apply the tax rates to we don't have anything up top for the child tax credit because there's no tax liability to consume it but we do have the additional child tax credit down below which we talked about in a prior presentation and we have the uh, earned income credit which is currently at the three thousand uh 409 it's not quite maxed out if we if we brought up the income a little bit to like uh let's say it was uh 15,000 and I bring it back on over now it's at the 3995 so that's the maximum for one child uh for one child so let's add another child and see the benefit of the second child so we're going to go back on over like, do we want to have another kid? Well, I don't know. Let's run the numbers on it, right? There's no way I'm dealing with a kid if it doesn't help my taxes out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Adam tax man, we're going to say, okay, second kid, still head of household, hasn't changed that. So now we've got the two kids. We're going to keep the income to start off with at uh, the 15,000. And we have the deduction is still a 20,000. So that means we have at this rate, no tax that's calculated nothing calculated up top because we have no tax liability to consume it on the refundable side we've got the additional child tax credit for the two kids and we have the earned income credit at uh the 6010 uh at the 6010 which is not quite maxed out let's bring the income up a little bit let's bring it up and say it was uh 17,000 on the income so now the tax, now we have 
6604 we still don't have any uh, tax calculation up top and we've maxed out basically uh, the credit for two dependents so now we're bringing it up to the maximum we're going to three dependents let's add another one so it's like do we want to have another kid and it's like well the first two kind of worked out but we're getting diminishing returns on these little buggers uh i'm not sure well let's run the numbers on the third kid so we've got uh head of household so now we're going to say that we have three kids we'll keep the income currently at the 17 and so then on page number two we have no tax at that point and then down below now we're maxing out the earned income credit at the 7430 so that's going to be the max of uh that credit now if i added another kid uh it's it's not going to have any difference because that's the max that has an impact on the earned income tax credit so let's just check that out so it's like do we want to have another kid and it's like okay let's run the numbers and basically after running the numbers we've just named this kid worthless this is the worthless kid it's not helping our taxes much <laughs> okay we wouldn't name him worthless even if he doesn't help the tax <laughs> but let's, we're gonna go to page number two so now we still don't have any tax now so it could have an impact possibly on the additional child tax credit but again we're maxed out at three or more with the impact on the earned income tax credit that's the point so so that's it so i'm going to remove that last one let's remove that one for now all right so now let's look at the income limitations so remember the maximum credit is 7430 it goes away entirely if not married at the 56838 but we want to know what the limit is on income levels in order to maximize the credit so if i go into the tables these are the tables on the form 1040 instructions you could find at the irs website and i'm looking at this column so single uh, or not married and we're looking over here with three kids so now i'm gonna i'm looking for the 7000 where it starts to go to 7000 uh, 430 which happens at an income level of about 16,500. so we're going to say all right so i can have income as low as 16 16,500 and still have the maximum credit at uh the 7430 uh, which which is lower than the standard deduction and so on so it's similar to the scenario that we had how high can it go what's the high end all right let's follow this down we're looking at this 7430 column do, 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 do. this column do, 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 do. still 7430 and then we're gonna sell so then it goes back down over here so it's here it's it's at 21 6 and then it goes to 21 6 50 it starts to go back down so around 21 6 50 we're gonna say all right let's say at 21 6 50 then if i go back on over now it's at 7405 the max is 7430 so it's starting to go back down because the income is on the high end and if i keep on raising the income it'll keep going down until i reach 56838 in which you would think it would be zero we wouldn't have any more after that point in time okay so that's going to be the general idea now let's see if we can mirror this in excel so on the first page we're saying 21650 is the income so let's mirror this in our worksheet over here we're going to say all right baseline case income 21650 and then we had head of house we're at head of household filing status head of household to do is that head of household did i do that right uh yeah all right and then i'm gonna say that we had on page two page two we had the tax calculation at 86 so the tax is well let's let's go to the well let's double check page one let me just say okay so we got 21650 minus the 20,800 gets us to the 850 there's the 850 and then on page number two we had tax calculated I'll let the software calculate the tax at 86 calculating the tax and then we're wiping out that 86 with the non-refundable portion of the child tax credit so I'll go over here to the other credits non-refundable portion we said was 86 I'm just going to put 86 here 
and then then we have the ref the refundable components so i'll go to the additional tax credits so to do, do and i and i'm just going to plug the numbers in this time uh, depending on the software i am dependent on the software here. so 2873 2873 and then the earned income credit we're calculating at the 7405 so here's the 7405 so if i go back to the first page that gives us 10278 so that means 10278 so i think that is correct that's going to be our baseline case so now let's imagine that we had two people that both were in the exact same boat there there and they have then two refunds of 10278 so i'll say multiply this times two to do it say times two let's do this one this equals this times two okay and let's say they got married so this is going to be most likely a problem because we don't get any benefits over three dependents whether single or married and the maximum credit is 7430 whether single or married right and the the income threshold does not double rather sing, whether single or married so we're going to say okay so if i go back on over and i can put the three other kids in here but it's not going to give us any more benefits you would think for this credit even if married but let's do it let's say okay all right so i'm going to double the income imagining we have spouse's income 20 so now we're at the 43 300 on the income if I go back on over to the forms, then we have married couple filing status increase from head of household for, to married filing joint. So that's beneficial, but it doesn't have anything to do with the kids. The kids don't even fit on the screen. I, ha I have to have a different statement because I have so many kids now. So we have the three kids and then we've got basically worthless one, worthless two and worthless three because and those are all the 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 spouse's kids of course my kids are not just <laughs> but but that's because they're not i'm just joking but that's because they're not going to give us any tax benefit that's not really their name that's just what i nickname them any case so <laughs> so we've got the 43 300 on the income and then now we have the the step up in the standard deduction which is not a result of the children but a result of the marriage filing status bringing the taxable income to uh, 15600 If I go to page two, now we also have favorable tax rates, which are impacting us now because all the tax rates are doubled from the single lien filing status. So that's good. And then we have uh, the child tax credit is consuming the tax of the 1563 that is there bringing the tax liability to zero the non-refundable portion and then we have the additional child tax credit for the refundable component and then the earned income tax credit and you can see the earned income tax credit is not at the max the max would have been the 7430 so not only did it not double but it's been reduced right even though you got six kids six kids now so if i was to look at it we'd say, okay, so the bottom line here is I'm coming to a bottom line. It's kind of confusing because of the interplay with the refundable, non-refundable child tax credit and the earned income tax credit. But the bottom line I'm coming to is to 10,347. So let's say 10,347, not with the percentages, 10,347. 10, so that's a pretty significant difference, $10,000, $10,209 between if they got married or if they didn't get married, right? So, so that would probably, you know, lower income, that would probably be a, a pretty, could be a quite a shock if you didn't really kind of think about that and in, in that inside, so if that was the case, right? So in any case, let's try it now, uh, but we're gonna say that, uh, let's say they had, one of, the, one of them had two kids and then the other had uh, three kids. So let's say, let's say one of them had two kids and they were maxing out with a credit of 6,604. And then the other had three kids. And so they were at the uh, 7,430. So again, you're, the, the two kids aren't gonna give you any more benefit uh, at, at this point in time if you get married because the one is already maxed out so let's check it out well, we're gonna say well 
what would happen then? Well, well, if we if they got married and we drop off a kid here, we're like, all right, get rid of worthless number three here. Worthless number three is gone, but they're still married. So in a prior presentation, I think we worked this out in our base case, assuming like a similar income of 21,600, which was maxing out the credit for, for a head of household filer with two kids. And that came out to 9,455. So if I go back on over here, it's like, that's too extreme where you had like three kids and three kids. But if they only, if they had two kids and then three kids, then that still is going to be 9,455. So then it would be 9,455. So if they filed separately, the one with three kids would get a refund of the 10,278 plus the 9,455. And again, if they get married, I think we're going to be in the same situation here. Let's check it out. It's because the kids aren't going to have an impact because that, that we only dropped off worthless three. So if we go back on over, we have Adam and Jane still married filing joint and we still got the three kids and the two worthless here, but we dropped off worthless number three. And so we've got the four, I'm just kidding with the worthless thing. It's cracking me up though. So, but that's yeah, just a joke. The kid, life is precious. It's not worthless for crying. Anyways, 27,700, that brings us to 15,6. We're going to page number two, uh, 1,563. Uh, is going to be the tax and that gives us our child uh, tax credit wiping it out for the non-refundable portion and then down below we've got the earned income tax credit at the 4227 and the additional child tax credit so that gives us 10347 and to, 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 so 10 same place right 10347 even though we had a, a lesser kid and so we're going to say that's going to be this minus this boom so still a significant difference let's see if i can do it with like one if we had uh three kid three kid person marries one kid person so now we're gonna say this was what was my last one 14 uh uh i think was this one where we had the worksheet for the i have too many worksheets open now so i think this was the one where we had the one so so this one, yeah, I think this is the one where we maxed out with one kid. So we have, if we had one kid head of household income at 21,600 and we maxed out the credit, we came out to a refund of the 5585. So if I go back on over and say, okay, uh, so now it would be one kid 5585. So now if they filed separately, the one with three kids would have that the one with one kid would have gotten that. And I think this number is gonna be the same. Let's check it out just to double check it here. So let's say they got married and like one of the couples had three kids and the other one only had one kid and you delete the worthless number two and we go back on over and say, all right, does, it, does that have any impact? And we have the married couple now we have at least they can fit on the first page of the tax return that's worth something <laughs> we got forty-three thousand three hundred minus minus we still come to the same taxable income of course the tax being calculated same amounts here and then we have the 4772 which i think are the same amounts here we come up to the same 10347 even though we have less a kid again so 10, 10347 if we subtract this out, we're going to say it would have been this uh, uh, minus, wait a second, if they filed separately, it would have been this minus this, right? So still significant difference. Uh, so you can see all the different combinations. If you people got married with zero to zero kids, zero to one kids, it gets complicated if the income levels are different and so on and so forth. But uh, you could you could see that that might be something that you want to look into before before you get married just to double check not to say that it maybe should stop you or anything but uh <laughs> you know it could it could be uh significant something to take into consideration so now let's let's go and see how high the income could go if they're married now so we so we looked at 
how high they could go if married, right? We just, we looked at that before. Oh wait, no, no, now they're married. So if they're married, we, we have a higher threshold because we looked at head of household before. So now it doesn't double, it goes up to 63,398 to go away. But, uh, but we, what we want to know is how high it could go to max out the credit of the three, four, 7,430. So let's go over here. Now we're on the married column and I'm looking for the 7,430. Let's see how high the income can go before that number starts going down. 7,430, 7,430, 7,430. And then right here at about 28,150, it starts to go down again. So the income could be as high as, let's go, let's get rid of the second one here. Just delete that one. And we'll say this is 28,000, what did I say it was? K Paso, well, this was 28,150, 28,000, 28,150, and then if I go back on over, now the credit is, is starting to go back down because the max is 7,430, this is 7,418. And then it would keep going down until we get to the to the maximum income level. So those are just a, a couple uh, comparisons on the credit. Let's actually look at the worksheet. I haven't really been focusing in on the worksheet over here. Here's the schedule EIC, the earned income credit. And then you can see we have the qualifying children information, child, 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 uh, the names and so on and so forth with regards to uh, the questionnaire for qualifications and then on the 1040 page number two you could see you have our worksheet here that you can uh, take a look at for the more detail with it obviously the idea would be that you want to have an idea of the general rules so that you can explain this to somebody you can double check the data input that you're putting into the system and help with planning scenarios especially when people are, you know, thinking about having a kid or base or thinking about getting married or, you know, what are going to be the implications of that could be a useful thing.